Welcome, everybody. Um, we're not live streaming, but we are recording because this is part of the Digital Schools Chapterthon. Winning is not that important. You know, what is important is this issue of, of creating understanding about the internet, the history of the internet. I should always give the classic disclaimer. If I'm going to talk about the history of the internet, it's my version of it, as you'll discover. Uh, But the idea in back of this chop things up in little pieces, scatter them in the four winds, bring them together, was the kernel idea that got elaborated uh, basically from then on. We have built an experiment. So in fact, a whole set of things were developed which were ignoring some fundamental problems that are beginning to hurt us now. So we basically are sitting on a very shaky environment, a very useful environment. Most of us really don't care if the network breaks occasionally. It doesn't usually break. It's, yeah, somebody steals 100 million addresses. Eh, what the heck? That's one problem. Okay? The other problems deal with governance. There's more and more desire on the parts of governments to control. But in fact, these, these are real problems. And they're problems which are going to affect not so much me, you know, I won't be around that long, but especially your students are going to have to face them. They're going to have to face all of them. For younger people, for my students, and I teach high school, but I've also taught middle school students, the world that they live in is out of sync in many ways with the curriculum that they're meeting in schools. There's a, a disjoint between their experience of the world, which is now so much online based, and the curriculum that they're being taught in schools. Important issues such as identity, privacy, big data, the psychology of the internet, what happens to human beings when we go online, how does that change the way that we interact, the way that we behave ourselves. So um, there are many, many topics. One thing that isn't lacking, though, is interest on, half of, uh, on behalf of students. Students, I have found, teaching these topics now for the past three years, uh, are absolutely passionate about talking and involving, and especially debating, all the issues that they're confronting online. What I want to challenge you today to do is for us to brainstorm together what do you focus on? What would your goal be with a group of young kids? And leaving them with a message after 50 minutes talking about the history of the internet. What we want the group to come away with overall is this sense of how innovation um, drove uh, development of the, the internet, you know, starting with writing and printing um, and radio and television, uh, bursts of, of innovation. Um, and, and one potential assignment students could have after the class is to look at one of these prior um, bursts of innovation and compare it to the innovation of the internet and, and, and what drove it. So a few people recognized the problem and tried to solve it. Right. And then we get to the particular of who were these people at this very beginning? Mm -hmm. What problem were they trying to solve? First, you know, they were high school students in, you know, Southern California and college students who just were trying to connect they were building computers and they were saying, well, let's connect the computers. Let's connect our two computers in different rooms. How do we do this? Mm -hmm. And then they have, they know people at the next uh, school. How do we connect that? So it starts out with very small problems being solved. Uh, and that at no point did anybody recognize just where this was going. Um, so, so what we had sort of written down, and we really liked the idea of the timelines, but having the understanding that we all have different interests in the timelines, having different timelines, uh, political uh, choices and decisions that were made and how that affected the internet, uh, technological innovations that were made and how that affected corporate um, hackers, mm -hmm. gaming and communication channels. Um, what do you consider major tech advancements? And that could be on different timelines. I think one, one point that I'd like to focus on is your, your idea of a timeline, which I think is excellent. It also gives a perspective just at the pace of development, but also to illustrate that we are really only at the birth of the internet still. Uh, 40 years is nothing in terms of the development, in terms of where we might be going, 
and to show that this is ongoing. We haven't finished the development, we're still building the internet. So, um, the one thing that, you know, as the Internet Society, which uh, is a thing that we emphasize, is the development of the multi-stakeholder model. And this is a rather unique development that is a result of the Internet, of the way that the Internet Engineering Task Force grew up, you know, that, um, and there is this thing with no kings, no, you know, running code as the principle of the Internet Engineering Task Force. And I think the one thing which I think is good to show your kids is like, John Perry Barlow's Declaration of Independence of Cyberspace and to discuss whether that still stands and whether it's still true or, or not. And to like, and the fact that, you know, there is the, the way that the internet is managed worldwide is unprecedented in history, that everything before has been managed by nations at a top level, you know, and that the internet is outside in and bottom up. So these principles, the principles of multi-stakeholderism, bottom up are, are important things, qualities of the internet to, to imply. I'd like to thank Ruben, I'd like to thank you all for coming. I'd also like to say, you know, if you're not a member of the Internet Society, you should be. Okay. Yay.